Can I confess something to you? I have a bad habit of not paying attention. My wife, Jamie, speaks. Sometimes I'm in my own little world thinking about something else, and it takes me a while to focus in and pay attention to her. I mean, is this just a guy thing? Like, we can only focus on one thing at a time? I mean, if a song's in my head or if I'm thinking about work, forget about it. I just, sometimes I can't seem to rein it in. Welcome back to Dining Room Devos with Pastor Jeff Step. Today's Dining Room Devo is really all about focus, and we're going to focus on just one verse, 1 Peter 1, 13, which says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Now, he starts out there with the word, therefore. And whenever you see the word, therefore, in Scripture, I want you to think of it as a stop sign. When you see a, a therefore in Scripture, stop. Why? Well, because it's an application word. It, it means because of what has just been said. So it's helpful when you see a therefore to go back and look at what it is that was just said. And last time, uh, we talked about how we have an advantage over the Old Testament prophets who predicted Jesus' ministry because we have the privilege of sharing the complete gospel message. God's revelation of himself of his written word and his plan of salvation through Jesus Christ have all been completed. And we, as New Testament Christians, have that. And so we have the, the privilege of proclaiming that message. So therefore, Peter says, because of that, what? And he gives us the answer here in verse 13. And he says, first of all, he says, prepare, because of that, prepare your minds for action. Prepare your minds for action. Now, in the Greek, uh, what it says is, gird up the loins of your mind. And I'm glad they changed it in the English to prepare your minds for action. Because gird up the loins of your mind doesn't really make a lot of sense to us, does it? But you see, in the first century, everybody wore long, flowing garments. Both men and women alike wore long, flowing garments. And so, if you had to run... Or if you had to work hard, you would have to hike up your gown and maybe cinch up your belt around your hiked up gown so that you didn't trip as you ran, so that your legs would have more freedom of movement. So, so Peter is essentially saying, get ready for the race. Get ready. Get your mind ready for work. Take your responsibility to be a witness seriously and be serious about your relationship with God. Like, like, don't forget that God has called you into ministry by his Holy Spirit. Prepare your minds for action. And then he says to be self-controlled. Self-control is hard, let's be honest. Self-control means saying no to your desires. And your desires are often influenced by your emotions, and your emotions can often be quite strong. I mean, if you're driving down the road, and someone cuts you off, what do you want to do? You want to tell them off. If I'm at home and I trip over a toy that my kids leave out, what do I want to do? I want to yell at my kids, even sometimes a way that's not very kind. If I see an attractive woman, my flesh wants to stare. But self-control means saying, no, don't. I choose not to. Why? Well, for one thing, it takes our focus off of our mission, the mission that Peter's told us about, of sharing Christ with others. But also, Peter tells us later on in this letter that, that, that not being self-controlled can be costly. He says later on in 1 Peter to be self-controlled and alert because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You see, when we're not self-controlled, then we become easy prey for our enemy who's looking to destroy us. Why do we have to have self-control? Why do we choose self-control? Well, it's all about focus, because we're focused on something more important. And he then says, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you. Now, that, that word fully is very important. Set your hope fully. In other words, put all of your concentration on it. 
probably familiar with the story of Apollo 13, the, the crew that was on their way to the moon and something went disastrously wrong and there was an explosion on board and they really weren't sure if they were going to be able to make it safely back to Earth. They might be trapped in space forever. But as they were heading back to Earth, there was a point during that mission uh, as they're trying to get back home where they had to fire their engines in order to reposition the craft to, be, to get going in the right trajectory. And if they steered wrong, even by just a little bit, they either might burn up in the Earth's atmosphere or be cast out into space forever, never to return. And so as they were on their way back, Captain Jim Lovell, he, he had to focus through a tiny little window and he kept Earth at the very center of that window for 39 seconds as they burned their engines. By keeping Earth at the center of his view, he knew they were going in the right direction. And as believers in Jesus, it's not the Earth that we keep at the center of, of our focus, but instead Peter tells us that we should have our, uh, we should set our hope fully on the grace. We keep the grace of God, the grace that's going to be given to us, fully in view. And, and the, it says the grace to be given. In the English, that sounds like it's something that's going to happen in the future. But in the Greek, it implies that it's something that's already on the way, kind of like an Amazon package that we keep looking at our front porch to see if it's arrived yet. And he says, the grace to be given when Jesus Christ is revealed. In other words, at his return, we will receive that grace that's already on the way. And we focus on that. Now, what is that grace? Well, first of all, even though we're already forgiven for our sins, we will be fully free from sin, fully free from sickness and death and from disappointment. And then also we will receive a position of authority in heaven and we will walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever. Peter says, set your focus on that reality, on what is to come when Christ returns. So because we're looking forward to that, we must prepare ourselves for whatever lies ahead. We must be careful how we live. So as we close today, how is your life of self-control? Are there areas of your life where you struggle with self-control? And if so, I, I would encourage you to ask God to help you exercise more of it. And ask him to help you focus on the salvation that is already on the way. Let's keep our focus on Jesus Christ today. As always, if you haven't already subscribed uh, to our channel, please, please uh, feel free to do that. Visit us at newparisfirst.com. We'd love to hear from you. May God bless you. We'll see you next time uh, as we examine God's word in Dining Room Devos. Take care.